Hello everyone. So we were dealing with advanced concept in .NET. We already had covered up WPF, uh, Window Presentation Foundation, and whatever the leftover is WCF, which is Window Communication Foundation. Well, we will start with this topic, and uh, it also introduces in .NET Framework 3.0, just like WPF. Um, the uh, the technology WCF it is a service oriented technology to develop any application. Well, it is not a base application. It is not uh, you know it, it, it doesn't give you any platform to create application just like web form, window form, or WPF. It is a service oriented. That means it gives you some service and you can use that service in your base application, uh, just like an external API do. Okay, you create a web service or you create that DLL or API. You share it with the world. You put it on the distributed system so a user who is creating an application can get that API can put it on the uh, on his application and can work around just like language interoperability where you can translate your language from one language to another language or it can be a um, it can be a source code for uh, maybe map or it can be a source code or an API for uh, like uh, <clears throat> What can I say it converts your word to PDF like that you just create that API or DLL you put it on the distributed system anywhere around the world and a user who is creating the application can get that API can put it on the source code of that application and can run around so th this is the thing that WCF gives you it gives you a kind of service oriented technology where you can communicate with that web service or you can say the service and your application so this service oriented design gives you a distributed system where you can run where it can run between different services and your client okay <clears throat> apart from that um, and why why i basically need this wcf is uh, let's say <clears throat> i have a three tier architecture in my .NET, and you are creating your application basis on three tier architecture uh, and three tier architecture possess presentation tier business tier and data tier where presentation tier deals with your all presentation just like html code your design code business tier deals with all the business logic that you are dealing with like your logic uh, like .cs file and data tier basically deals with your database application where you create your tables store procedures like that okay so this is a three tier architecture <clears throat> and why i am separating it out why i am writing it in the same code .cs why i am separating out like presentation like business like data why i am doing it well, the reason is pretty much simple. If you are creating an application and if you are putting everything in the same file .cs file, and if you are writing in the same, you know, same file, then um, it is going to reduce the scalability of your application. Uh, so, if your application uh, is going to be handled by like uh, it is going to be operated by like like thousand users one at a time, your application is going to be degraded if if you do not work with uh, like three tier architecture if everything is on the single page like the the code for html the code for logic and the code for uh, database it is on the same page then if the thousand user run your application at a time your application is going to be degraded it, it is not going to work properly just like your gtu website whenever the result comes up it gets degraded you cannot open it you, it cannot be loaded right so there is a heavy load on that on that particular application that's why i need to separate this out so i'm separating my business logic i'm separating my the presentation code i'm separating my database code in different different system and i'm putting it all over the world wherever i want that is the reason we have a distributed system we are putting it on the computers in different computers and then i'm getting those source code uh, by calling that uh, you know uh, specific uh, things like I'm, I'm calling presentation code I'm, I'm calling business logic code and then i'm calling i'm calling database code okay and then if thousand users comes in my application it is not going to be loaded because the code is separated out all over the world okay so my application is now not going to be degraded it is going to be worked properly and that is the reason we have wcf this is the base uh, motivation or the intuition behind you know creating this wcf <coughs> in dotnet framework 3.0 and uh, i can say that um, uh, it is a communication foundation that means your services is going to communicate with your client application by means of some 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 technology and that technology is basically uh, it can be uh, the soap and soap is simple object access protocol by means of that you can communicate with your service with your client application 
okay so um, they have so many protocols uh, by means you can you can call your services uh, to your application so uh, i'll show you the architecture of wcf and it looks like this so your this is your application and it deals with contract service time messaging and activation and hosting services okay i hope you understand the meaning of ap application i don't need to give you an explanation on activity Ovation. and then we have this messaging so you can see we have http we have tcp binary encoders by means you you can communicate with your services by, by with the help of this okay this http tcp they are all the protocols by means you can communicate with your uh, uh, with your client application so i'm going to explain this wcf architecture so that you can be possibly right in the exam uh, okay so let's get started with this and we will see the first is a contract so <clears throat> what do you mean by a contract so let me just come it over here and i am going to explain the wcf architecture now wcf architecture and the first thing that we're going to understand is data contract oh, i'm sorry i'm just i'll just write the contract layer And contract layer basically provides you the information. I'll just write it over here. Provides information about the different features of the message. Okay, that you are uh, that you are uh, sending from one service to the other service, or maybe from one service to the client application. It provides you the different features and uh, whenever you are dealing with you know sending and receiving the messages uh, so it basically deals with uh, let me just write it over here that it deals with data contract first so data contract with it, it gives you the message parameters okay what kind of parameters you are sending with the uh, with the message uh, data contract handles that message parameters and uh, um, the parameters are basically the parameters are basically based on XML, okay? Extended markup language. So this is XML-based parameters. The other thing that we have data apart from data contract, we have message contract. So the message contract deals with specific part of message. Specific part of message it means nothing but whatever the message that you are sending from one uh, service to other or from one service to the client application uh, specific part of message using soap mm, okay so dealing with that then uh, apart from that we have service contract and service contract deals with what kind of service you are using in the in the in the in the in the message so provide specific information to the content which enables the client to understand what service is he offering okay so this is it uh, and this there is a typo okay so service contract will give you uh, what kind of services uh, that uh, that specific web service is going to uh, give you or offering you okay so apart from service uh, contract we have policy binding policy and uh, binding and policy binding controls different protocols okay so uh, when you are communicating between different services and uh, services and client we need protocols to communicate right and all those protocol is being controlled with the help of this policy in binding okay so it could be like http uh, it could be like uh, soap or it could be or maybe tcp all these protocols are used for communication one more thing is pretty much important here that the uh, whenever you are dealing this soap soap is basically when you are communicating with wcf to wcf which means when you are dealing with wcf application to wcf application you are communicating to wcf application then you use soap otherwise what you can use you can use other protocols just like http when you are dealing with wcf and other um, and other application okay i hope you are getting it 
you can use another protocol if you are using wcf to wcf communication then you use soap uh, and if you are not using the i mean the other uh, wcf and you are using other application then you use http or tcp whatsoever you like you can use it okay <coughs> Apart from that, uh, we deal with contract layer, then we have something called as um, service uh, runtime layer. And service runtime layer basically it manages, it, it, it manages different behavior, okay, uh, behavior of WCF service. um that occurring uh that occurring while while hosting the service okay so it manages the behavior of wcf uh, when you are hosting that uh hosting that service so if i if i come back to this uh, wcf architecture and we are dealing with service runtime you can see it only it, it it basically deals with behaviors can you see this metadata behavior instance behavior concurrency behavior um, it deals with behavior only okay so what behavior that wcf services is providing you this is the this is the chamber that it provides you okay so now uh, apart from service runtime layer uh, it is also having some parameters and we'll discuss that parameters first parameter is throttling behavior <clears throat> so throttling behavior controls the number of <clears throat> messages passing from service to client okay so it controls the number of messages if the number of messages is going to be very high i mean then definitely i need to control it over so i need some parameter for that so we have throttling behavior for that i cannot use infinite number of messages uh, to communicate with my service and uh, that is not possible and that's why we have throttling behavior right <clears throat> and then we have error behavior which is easy to understand um, just error behavior <clears throat> so it deals with deals with um, deals with the messages that displays uh, any any error okay it deals with that any error during um, during runtime maybe okay uh, basically it is service runtime so whatever the behavior we are checking it out it is on the runtime so whenever any service runs and at that particular instance of time we are we are seeing the behavior so error um, the error behavior deals with the message that displays an error during runtime okay and the next thing is we're gonna see the metadata behavior <clears throat> and metadata deals with uh, deals with processing oh, I'm so sorry for this uh, spellings deals with processing of metadata uh, to ensure to ensure that it is available to the client okay and I hope you understand you understand the meaning of metadata that is data about data so it deals with the metadata that is there in the service it is available to the external client or not okay that behavior is being checked out by the metadata behavior and then we have instance behavior <coughs> and instance behavior deals with number of number of time number of time the service is being raised or instanced by the um, by the client check it out at what number of time the service is being is being instanced or being raised by the client okay that kind of behavior is being checked out by the instance behavior then we have message inspection <coughs> and from the name itself you can understand that it inspect it inspect the the message passing from service to client and for error 
analysis okay any kind of error has been there then it, it is used for analysis uh, for inspection that if there is any problem then what the problem is okay so this message inspection is is going to give you that then we have so transaction behavior and transaction I, I I hope you know the meaning of transaction that if you are uh, I mean whatever the function whatever the the thing that you want to do is it successfully done or not uh, that can be checked out with the help of transaction behavior okay we have a concept called uh, rollback and commit uh, commit is for a successful transaction and rollback if there is any failure attempt then you have to roll back it and then start it um, I mean start it again so transaction will give you a change the state of a message it, it provides you state of message um, so if the transaction is a success or failure okay so the, it gives you a state of message then we have a, a dispatch behavior and dispatch behavior basically um, it, it provides you how a message is studied and processed by WCF infrastructure. Well, it is infrastructure. Okay. So, well, dispatch it means how your message is going to be studied and processed by the the the, the framework itself, the WCF platform itself. Okay. This is the uh, the last part I think uh, dispatch behavior and uh, what else we have concurrency concurrency behavior well concurrency behavior deals with the i hope you understand the concurrent programming um, and like one at a time you are reading another time you are writing also okay so uh, you're doing the read and write both at the same exact time and that is the concurrency so the concurrent behavior it provides you controls the parallel as you are dealing with uh, you know distributed system that means uh, there is there must be a concurrency um, i mean topic uh, as we are dealing with distributed system because distributed system deals with a concurrency i mean uh, one person is also using the presentation tire the other person person can also use the, the same presentation tire at the same time so we need this concurrent behavior how it works with the messages so it deals with or it controls the parallel functions uh, that that running running at the time of client access the wcf service okay that is your concurrent um, concurrency behavior or concurrent behavior so you had seen service runtime layer and the last part or not the last part but the third part is the messaging layer and messaging layer messaging layer provides the information about different uh, you can say different channels it uh, provides the information uh, information i'm so sorry for this information about different channels by means of channels it is nothing but uh, the the way you are communicating with these services it can be http tcp soap or like that okay so these are the channels uh, which are required which are required to process the message or just me write message okay uh, so um, basically the the format or the uh, here what kind of channel we have let's see um, we have tcp uh, i hope you know the uh, transmission control protocol we have tcp we have http we have binary encoder we have xml encoders uh, these encoders are basically used to read write and convert messages into xml format so the transport channel just me just give you the idea that these channel these this channel help in managing processing that processing the message that 
need to be communicated to be communicated <clears throat> it basically uses two kind of uh, you know channels one is the transport and the another one is protocol so the uh, so it uses two um, things to pass from service or for communication I'll just let me write just for communication one is it uses something called as transport and another one is protocol and uh, when I say transport uh, this is not uh, transpan this is transport okay these are the two things that it uses messages layer one is transport uh, transport gives you is used to read write and convert the message into an XML format okay this is the work that is used by transport so it uses uh, read write and convert the message into XML format so if I'm using HTTP then it converts into uh, first of all it reads write and then it converts into the XML format and then we have protocol Oh, I'm so sorry transport is basically the encoders I'm so sorry for that protocol is nothing but the TCP that is you know taking the message from one part to the another part so <clears throat> it process TCP HTTP all those are all those are protocols okay however the transports are the encoders like this here these are the encoders XML text binary so what it exactly do it takes the one format like HTTP uh, it, 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 if the message is coming from HTTP protocol then it, it is the transport is going to read it it going to write it if it wants to then it converts into the specific format by which the application is going to understand okay so if there is an XML encoder uh, then it is a transport it will read it it will write it and it converts uh, from one extension to the XML format so that the application is going to understand okay that is that is the work of uh, the messaging layer and the next part is uh, the hosting and I think hosting is uh, you know it, it's basically uh, used to um, host the application uh, with your service with any with any service uh, generally it could be done with the help of IIS server um, specifically used in uh, .NET um, it also uses something called as WS or most precisely it is used by IIS so hosting is basically uh, can be done with the help of um, IIS server when your application is being embedded with any web service or the service then uh, the last part as the last part we need to host it so that a user can a user can grab it and can work it around right so the last thing in the host when you host it it could be executable file dot exe it could be a dll file or it could be a window service okay so this is the wcf window communication foundation and mm, i mean you can you can program it if you know how to program web service then it is going to be very easy for you okay i hope you understand it and uh, thank you so much for listening to me if you have any doubt you can uh, you know comment in the comment section uh, i'll be happy to help you the program for WCF, uh, I mean, you can create uh, like, uh, what you can get, create? You can create a chat application uh, and call some external service. Use a namespace such as using remoting. Remoting can be used in WCF. So you check it out for remoting service. Uh, you create chat application. We can use WCF there. Okay. There are so many programs available over the, over the internet. You can check it out. Okay, generally, if you know how to deal with web services, then you can easily go around and can program WCF applications or WCF services. Okay, so I hope you understand it and thank you so much for listening to me.